Gold, gold, gold. That's what we're going to talk about today in our video. With uncertainty everywhere, gold has once become a very hot commodity that everybody seems to be talking about. The price of an ounce of gold has risen 28% since the beginning of the year. Normally this kind of activity is a result of investors fleeing to safety and, and or concern over inflation. However, we've also seen equity markets hit all-time highs recently. So the question I ask is this, is the pr rising price of gold a result of capital seeking a safe haven or is it a byproduct of the massive amount of new money supply? I believe only time will tell and I don't think we're gonna have to wait long to find out. So while we do wait, let's talk about how to invest in gold. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the three most popular gold investments and break down the pros and cons. So the first option investing in gold is actually the uh, hard commodity itself. This is the most obvious way to invest as you literally will own this gold. And your local bank or bullion exchange will be ha very happy to sell you gold in a variety of denominations. So what are the advantages of owning physical gold? Well, first of all, the fact that you own it, you can take it and put it into a safety deposit box, hide it away, put it under your mattress or wear it on your, what, your neck. I know my wife likes to do that one. There are very few non-cash investments that are as simple as that. You can sell gold quite easily. There is a very liquid market for gold and you can walk back right into the same bank or bullion exchange shop that you bought it from and they'll be happy to buy it back from you. And the price of gold is quite stable, holding simil similar characteristics to a treasury bill. Obviously this year has been somewhat of an exception, but gold tends to hold its value against inflation quite well. Disadvantages, well, of course, there's the price of gold is, well, it's stable for some, you don't really wanna buy treasury bills for long term. Gold can often be argued in the same way because its price generally doesn't appreciate unless you have an exception year like this. You also have to store it somewhere, incurring costs for storage. Gold is one of the most value dense substances you can think of. So even having a small amount of gold in a safety deposit box can be quite expensive. And you cannot invest gold bullion through an RSP or TFSA. So option number two is investing in gold ETFs or exchange traded funds. This is where you hold equity in a variety of gold companies, which gives investors a way to have broad exposure to the gold companies in the exploration development and gold producing industries. Advantages here include businesses produce cash flow that is related to the price of gold and often some multiple of it. So if the value of an ounce of gold goes up by 10%, the value of gold companies can often double or even uh, go higher than that. You also get diversified exposure so you can easily and effectively gain exposure to a whole network of gold companies instead of trying to find that needle in the haystack you just hold the whole haystack. Um, and the opportunity to use leveraged ETFs is also available for you um, but of course comes with more risk. The disadvantages of gold ETFs is that a you have to pay a fee to a fund manager that fund manager may have poor performance um, and you're going to get the losers with the winners. And sometimes there's a real disconnect between the net asset value or the NAV and the market price of the company, companies themselves. The third option are individual gold companies. By buying shares in individual gold companies, you're able to sort of hand pick how your money is invested. And of course, there are thousands of different gold companies to choose from on the stock exchange. And they break down to broadly these three groups. So the first group is called juniors. These are smaller companies that don't produce gold or they only produce a little today, but have exploration rights or leases. Their value comes from the possibility that one day they will turn from a cheap exploration lease into a billion dollar asset. Lots of money has been made and lost in junior gold investing. And investors can multiply their initial investments by 10 or even 100 times. A 10 is often referred to as a 10 bagger if you've ever heard that term before. Second are intermediates. They're somewhere in between juniors and producers. These are companies that are in the sticky process of turning a resource into a producing asset. A junior company has proven that they've got gold, they've drilled the holes in the ground, and now they're in the process of proving that they can turn it into an economically viable gold producing mine. And finally, there's what are often referred to as the majors. These are massive multinational companies that have a network of producing gold mines around the world. They generate cash flow and they pull gold out of the ground and sell it into the market. So what are the advantages of individual gold investing? Well, first of all, you get concentrated exposure, which means you have the opportunity to win and win big. There's high torque. If the price of gold goes up, it often takes the price of gold companies for a wild ride by a larger multiple. And you know what you're getting. When you invest in these companies, you can see their financials, you can talk to their management, you can vote at their AGMs. 
The downside, of course, is number one, the inverse of the concentration. Concentrated exposure means concentrated risk. If you're not a winner, you get nothing. If your area that you're exploring in gets turned into a national park, you get nothing. And if the company goes bankrupt, you get nothing. So there's a big risk to individual gold investments. In my view, the best way to invest is to touch on all three. It's a portfolio diversification approach to take, but more importantly is exposure to gold, in my view, is always a good theme to have as part of your overall portfolio. As Warren Buffett said years ago, it's not timing of the market, it's time in the market that matters. And so for a lot of people, especially here in Vancouver, which tends to be a bit of a mining hub and a lot of gold bugs, as the saying goes, they like to get in and get out and trade it and be active. But I view is you should always have a baseline exposure to the gold market for events like we're dealing with with COVID-19 today. If you'd like to talk a little bit more about how to integrate gold investing into your overall portfolio, give myself, Stefan, James, Alex a ring. We'd be happy to chat with you. Look forward to giving you more updates in the future. Thanks for tuning in.